well, you can say that iron is in my blood, it's in your blood as well. It's iron that gives haemoglobin the red pigment in your blood, its red colour. It is an absolutely central molecule to, uh, element to life, except for crabs which use copper. But you'll have to hear about that later. So, so iron, iron is a really, really abundant metal, which is used as lots and lots of structural material. So you can see lots of pieces of iron around some of the racking, and even in fact, some of these pieces of equipment have got high iron contents. They've got other elements mixed with them to form alloys, like stainless steel or perhaps hastalloy. So there might be some nickel, some chromium. But you can see some really quite wonderful iron components here. But if we perhaps go across to our drawer, I have an extremely long-standing interest in its chemistry. In particular, I made one compound of iron, so-called iron tetracarbonyl, which had four groups around it, and everybody had expected that it would have a shape like one of these, <coughs> shaped with tetrahedron like that, whereas in fact it turned out that it had a much more irregular shape. The four groups were arranged like this. And so, ever since this, every time I t hear the word iron, I get quite excited. So here we have the iron sponge, and if we rotate the glass, we can see that it flows a bit like a liquid. It's really, really finely divided powder. And that would be made via a precipitation method or something like that. Okay, so we'll pop that back in the box. And let's see what other pieces of iron that we can find. So this is iron wire. Okay, and you can see this is a very small wire, it's 0.2 of a millimetre in diameter. And you can see that the shiny material underneath is iron that hasn't undergone oxidation. So this is where it's been protected from the oxygen in the air. Now if we look at the iron at the top, we can see this looks really familiar, especially because it looks like the rust that we might find on the bottom side of some of our cars. So here's some iron oxide on top of the iron. The very first chemical experiment I did was well, chemical reaction was with iron. And I think the same is true for many generations of school children. I heated up iron and sulphur together and made iron sulphide, sort of blackish solid. But then we put acid on it and got a terrible smell of bad eggs. And this was my introduction to chemistry. And I really loved it.